But anyway, that's not why I call. I call because I want to discuss my son. Are you still flown within your purpose and then the Lord lead you and guide you and direct our path? Are you still ushering? When you gonna get discovered? Ain't it about time for the producer to give you the hookup of one of your musical theater writing? Oh, and what about your friend Toya? Oh. Is she still married to that guy? You think she could ever change her mind and get sweet on you? Come on, son. What's the 411? Baby, the show is meta, meta, meta. So A Strange Loop is really meta in that it is a story about a fat black gay musical theater writer named Usher who works as an Usher at a Broadway show who is writing a musical about a fat black gay musical theater writer named Usher who works as an Usher at a Broadway show who is writing a musical about a fat black gay musical theater writer named Usher who works as an Usher at a Broadway show ad infinitum. Is it writing a musical about a black gay man who's writing a musical about a black gay man who's writing a musical about a black gay man who's writing a musical about a black gay man, etc. Correct. I think there's a lot of universalities in a strange loop. Um, I think it's a story of somebody who's struggling with a sense of isolation and a sense of feeling um, othered and apart from many different senses of communities. And I think that that's something that a lot of people have experience with. And there's also a part of us that wants to conform to society in, in each of us. And it kind of examines the 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 abrasions to that, like the um, the friction of trying to fit into somewhere that hasn't really got any space for you. Now you keep saying that you be off riding musical, but what the heck kind of music you been riding? It probably sounds like that that blasted white girl music you used to listen to in high school and try and hide from me and your dad, don't you? You ain't up there in New York thinking you a white girl with your musical theater writings, is you? Because every time we ask, you just say you be writing about life. And I'm like, life? What you know about life? You ain't but 25 years old. Almost 26. You gonna turn 26 on the 26th. Uh, oh, but I don't care if you 26 or 126. I did all the work to birth you into this world, so now it's time for you to pay me back. I got a job for you. <laughs> the thoughts are a wild cavalcade of uh, human emotion. Sometimes we both play the same part of character. We both can be mum one minute along with the other guys. Sometimes we are both dad. Um, we are sexual partners. We are, we're a whole range of um, different people in this life. Um, so you've got to stick with us on this one. Um, but in terms of as an actor, it's fun to play, isn't it? It's but very fun to play. We all have thoughts in our head that tell us different things, um, just as humans. And uh, you get to see like physical representation of Usher's thoughts. So I'm the slightly more encouraging voice. I'm probably the opposite. I mean, I'm the more challenging of the thoughts, I guess. There is so much that the thoughts bring to the stage. The thoughts represent so many different aspects of Usher's mind, but also his interpretation or his experience of the people who he has had in his life um, and the way in which he perceives them. My thought seems to largely be the most challenging, sometimes wicked, but for a purpose. It's not just they want to be cruel. I think it's about getting him to wake up. So the idea of the thoughts came to me very late in the process before we got to Off-Broadway. Initially, they were just sort of these figures that I had, had abstractly cast as like patrons at the theater who were just bothering him all the time. But as we got closer to the production, I realized that I needed to identify them even more specifically, especially because the concept of a strange loop is so much about self-reference and about um, the inside and like the thing that's like controls that or your or your thoughts. Ooh, like Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry writes real life. Tyler Perry knows how to bring everything together with all the stories and all the singing and all the different people talking. And Tyler Perry don't never forget to bring in the spirituality. Cause Tyler Perry loves his mom and the Lord. So write a nice, clean Tyler Perry-like gospel play for your parents, please. It's the least your black buck can do after all the love we done gave. And all the money we done come off of. Unless you just don't love your mama. Or the Lord. 
I mean, certainly we love our Black and queer audiences. Um, uh, I hope that word is out um, uh, to come and see us. When I was younger, I would have loved to have seen something that represented uh, this experience in such a bold and vivacious and exciting way and didn't shy away from talking about stuff that's, that's deep and dark and a lot of people struggle with um, because it makes you feel like you're not alone. And to see, and I would have killed to see black queer representation on stage. But, you know, I really think that this is a show for anybody who likes to go to the theater, likes to be shown stories that take them outside of themselves, but also like to see themselves reflected on stage in unlikely ways. I think black people and people of color being able to see themselves on stage, uh, people who are bigger, plus size, uh, get to see a lead go through a show and not come in for one scene or for a song and then leave and never be seen again. I would love to see more black people in the audience. So I'd love to see them come and just see what it's like. And black Christian people as well, because there is the theme of being raised in a Christian home as a queer person and the difficulty that that brings. So I would love Christian parents, black Christian parents to come and see this show. Um, so that's who I'd like to see in the audience. And gay people can come and see a person be centered who does not get centered enough and tell a story that is full of complexity and love and, and life. Uh... <laughs> This is Danny and Eddie reporting for What's On Stage. Hi, here's the gossip, here's the tea. Yes. <laughs> I want to see young people in the audience because when I was young and gay, I am still gay, but when I was young, I'm still young. <laughs> Why is this interview going so to part? Oh, they should have never put us together. No, they should have. We have history. Yeah, we do. So not that kind of history. No, 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 no. <laughs> not that kind of history. Bleep. <laughs> <laughs> also, my thoughts are saying some really profound thing. And sometimes it's saying, you just use cavalcade in an interview with what's on stage. That's a baller move. You're phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to add? I'm still stuck on cavalcade. You said cavalcade and my brain switched off. That is impressive. Phenomenal His vocabulary word. is wonderful. Just go with it. Mm. Lose yourself in the strange loop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>